Hey guys, Level Cap and Luton here with an episode of On the Level, and today we're going to be talking about Second Assault DLC for Battlefield 4. Now, the whole concept behind this DLC is that they've remastered four fan favorite maps from BF3 into BF4 with some updates. They've added in Levolution, and when you get onto the maps themselves, they sort of portray uh, the fact that there's already been a battle there. So you're seeing the aftermath of the first battle from Battlefield 3. Luton and I have gotten to play this. We both enjoyed it. Luton, what was your favorite map? For me, definitely my favorite map was Oman. Uh, I just feel that, that map always plays out particularly well, whether it's from the air or from a vehicle perspective or whether you're sort of fighting on the ground. And I definitely had some really intense sort of battle moments where there's helicopters crashing down, loads of fire explosions all over the place. Um, but I think all of the maps, like you say, the kind of battle aspect, they've kind of grubbied them up. They've made them darker, a little bit more intense. And that's how it kind of felt generally throughout. Also the fact that you've got the Levolution coming in as well, and that has like a, an aspect to it. But Imam particularly with that, the sandstorm that comes in and sort of overtakes the entire area of the bases. And it just becomes this gritty sort of urban grind fest. It's really, really nice. And I just love what they've done with it. Um, but some interesting map choices there. I mean, Metro, do you think that was a good choice to bring back again? Um, I do, personally. You know, that would have been on my, my, uh, my list, my top four list. Uh, I really did enjoy playing Metro. I think on Conquest it was... A terrible map and I'm hoping that the new avenues and pathways that they've added in there sort of balances it out but visually speaking I agree with you the it's really cool to sort of see the maps that you're so used to and then see the massive changes mm -hmm. like after the sandstorm or just the sort of overgrown grass feeling on Metro and the way that there's all these support structures down in the subways holding the roof up and that it's flooded. It's just kind of neat to see these uh, places that have such a strong nostalgic feeling attached to them and then like just see the update. And visually too, uh, it really does show you that the Battlefield 4 engine has kind of come uh, a long way once you compare the old version of the maps to the new version. The atmosphere, I think, is one of the biggest aspects to it because whenever you bring old maps back again, that's the key thing. Is like, what can you do to really make those more interesting? Because sometimes when you bring maps back from the past, it's kind of like, oh, people think it's just been a bit lazy because, oh, they had these already, so they've just brought them back again. But actually, I was surprised at the kind of graphic uh, update for each of them. I mean, Caspian, it's a very small change the way that they've kind of changed the, the color of the trees and the whole kind of environment, but it feels very different. It plays out very different. Oman, particularly, as I say, feels very different. Firestorm, they've they've tweaked it a little bit. There isn't that much difference there, but it, it does feel a little bit darker and a bit more brutal. Um, mm -hmm. but, but the atmospheric change, I think, is one of the main things for me. So again, it's kind of that, you know, how far do you take it? It's that, always that that line of sort of how much do you change to keep it Yeah, yeah. Core, let's, you know? let's actually talk about Firestorm because yeah. uh, I noticed the same thing while playing it. I was trying to figure out like what's different, you know, and yeah. what's what's the big change here. And uh, visually speaking, it's very impressive in terms of the fire effect because yeah, now yeah. it kind of lives up to its name. You've got uh, oil tanks. The most the closer oil tanks now are burning. Uh, there's yeah. lots of little leaks and gas mains that are just will catch you on fire if you go by. Yeah. And the large pools of gasoline all over the ground that you can light on fire yourself. Yeah. That the first time I saw that, I was in the attack helicopter and I was shooting at a cluster of infi on the ground, and they're standing right in the middle of this gas puddle. Yeah. And the whole thing went up, and I yes. was just like, "Oh my god! Like what just happened?" And that was sort of a really cool experience. And so as you start to discover these small little things over a map that essentially looks the same as the same layout, um, you sort of get this new appreciation for what the devs have done with it. One thing that um, I found was a little interesting, and I don't know how they're trying to balance out Battlefield 4 compared to BF3, but they've taken three vehicle intensive maps that are, I wouldn't say vehicle intensive, but definitely favor vehicle gameplay, and then given us like one infantry Mm. Map. And I was hoping for maybe one more infantry map, like uh, back to Karkin or something or, like or Grand that. Grand Bazaar, because you know? a lot of people commented about wanting Grand Bazaar yeah. because of the great yeah, gameplay. Yeah, Grand Bazaar would you know? have been perfect. That was yeah. a perfectly balanced map. You know, you can look at it from the top down, and it's just it's symmetrical. It makes sense. The flanking rats are great. It's got great lines. Uh, so it yeah. would have been nice to see another infantry map back in there, but instead we got three maps that are 
you know, they're good conquest maps, but they're also very, they favor air pilots, they favor tank drivers, uh, and then infantry really all just got to play like engineer or just go anti-armor. Yeah. I think the maps though as well, I think it, they're a good analogy for like Battlefield 4, you know, because they've they've mm. made small changes that at first you don't really notice, but then you actually start to play and you go, oh, actually, this did actually have more of an impact than I thought that it would. Uh, just to pick up on the fire, uh, the fire is awesome. I mean, it looks so good in Battlefield for anyway but in firestorm when you light up that fire on the ground the gas on the, the fuel on the ground it hurts you bad as well you know it's not like yeah. oh i'm getting burned i'll jump out of it if you just run through a little patch it'll take half your health off so it's really fun you've got to be careful on that stuff it's, it's really intense i like that aspect as well that it's actually like a, a physical danger rather than just a kind of graphical thing there how about the levolution on that one now on our on our play session we were trying to figure it out and we couldn't we found some buttons here and there uh from what I was told, the like main gas line, I guess, the big pipes that run throughout the map yep. can go critical or something and just explode and create these crazy fiery barricades everywhere. Did you guys figure that out on your end? We, did, we didn't see any massive evolution. Um, as I say, I think it, the same thing that you're talking about, like those sort of explosive charges that you find all over mm -hmm. the place, like they have in Battlefield 4 now, sort of by the side, and they can cause like a big, big explosion. We found some of those on the tankers. But no, in the games that we played, it didn't play out where we had like a massive, massive detonation that I saw. But out of all of them, that's the only one that we didn't see it on. So... It'll be interesting to see when that one comes through. But um, on Metro, the kind of the evolution effects in there. Now, how much of an effect do you think those are actually going to have to the Metro gameplay? Because a lot of people are talking about different routes and things. And actually, I think on the gameplay that we saw, we didn't get perhaps a chance to sort of see the full effects of those because of the way the maps that we played. Uh, but you have these ceilings that can kind of fall down and you can shoot out the props that are holding them up. That can damage people and hurt them as that stuff comes down. It also can have steam kind of flying in and that can obscure some roots and stuff which actually could be really beneficial because yeah. once your visuals are obscured it may give people the opportunity to kind of push forward and, and get through some of those sections where they've been locked down but how do you think those little changes are going to play out there for metro well overall i think the the main feeling of metro is going to stay the same and it kind of surprised me when i made a video on it and people were like, oh, they ruined Metro. And I was like, well, Metro was kind of crazy to begin with. But I guess there's a lot of people that just really like that insane clustered uh, yeah. Metro gameplay. I think the addition of the pathways, I don't know if you saw the one on the side that sort of loops around between the second and third set of MCOMs. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the addition of the elevators. You know, it's not a huge change, yeah, but it's, small, it's enough yeah. to try and just make getting past some of those crazy choke point areas a little bit easier. The Levolution stuff I think is going to be cool. Uh, like you said, visually, it's going to uh, offer like a, a nice opportunity for people to take advantage of all the smoke that's created. Um, and in fact, some of the Levolution areas, you can kind of get caught on them or it makes it harder for you to sort of run past that area after the ceiling comes down. So people camping certain areas might have a tougher time after the Levolution comes down. Overall, I think the gameplay itself on Metro is going to be pretty reminiscent of Battlefield 3. It's yep. just going to look cooler and we're going to have a few more tactical options here and there. One really key thing about Metro as well was putting the jet skis in at the very first base because I think that's pretty key because so many times you get stuck on that first base on Metro and now having that jet ski option it's just going to give people the opportunity to do like a fast flank and it's just like another little thing there to make a change with and I think that will help quite a lot. Um, one thing I should point out as well with Oman, uh, on Oman now we actually have obviously the attack boats which are new to Battlefield 4. That's actually going to be a big thing because so yeah. many times from the aircraft carrier coming in on Oman, if you were if you didn't have like a, a fully balanced team game, uh, you could get fully spawn trapped on uh, the aircraft carrier. But now with those attack boats, they're so powerful against aircraft. You know, if you have the uh, anti-air yeah. air missiles on the boats firing against jets or helis, you're going to have a real opportunity to clear that airspace and actually get in onto the shore. So I think again, that's another little balance change. Things that you know you start to sort of think as you play the game and as you sort of get into it so that's a positive yeah. change as well well that's gonna that's gonna change up the flow of that map entirely because uh for for two reasons one the beach area of that map is three very important control points so if attack boats can sort of patrol along that beach yep. and react to different points getting captured and stuff like that all of a sudden the u.s is going to have a much more powerful influence there also there's a river that uh sort of lets in further into the map and it'll offer some interesting flanking rats yeah. so you can sneak an attack boat in there and get some easy helicopter kills as they're taking off from the base uh, i can see lots and lots of opportunities coming from that
Okay, and then not forgetting as well, obviously we've got five new weapons coming in with Second Assault, and those are going to be the F2000, the Gold Sniper, the ASVAL, the M60 E4, and the Dow 12. So some real firm favourites coming back. The Gol, of course, from Bad Company 2. I've seen it already. Loads of people really, really excited about that one. Uh, I got a chance to play with the AS Val, and it's like a laser, that thing. Seriously, it's unreal. That gun is so good and really looking forward to it. On the other hand, the F2000 has really taken a bit of a nerf, and, and most people are saying they didn't really enjoy that. Uh, level out of what you played, any of those that you particularly looking forward to, excited about? Well, I'm really curious to uh, get my hands on the stats. You know, I like the stats, but the AS Val... Uh, in Battlefield 3, had the option to upgrade it to a 30 round magazine, which was pretty much the only way you wanted to run it. Uh, in Battlefield 4, it seems to be locked in at 20 rounds, so I'm really curious to see how they're going to try and balance out that weapon, or if they're not even going to balance it out, because it was very good in Battlefield 3, so maybe they're like, oh, maybe we should just give it 20 rounds yeah. and call it good. So I'm very curious about that. I like that the F2000's iron sights are reminiscent of those. Uh, they're accurate with that sort of hood sight on there. Yep, yep. It's a very cool looking weapon. It looks sort of like the assault rifle from Halo with that sight on there. I'm sure I won't be using it, but I like that DICE added that into the game because it is pretty accurate to the real version of the gun. Um, I don't know. Overall, I'm pretty excited. People are, you know, the M60. Is a, it's a nice sounding gun. I love it. I don't know if it's going to be too effective. We'll have to see. It's got a lot of uh, big competition. And uh, the goal, which I didn't use too much in Bad Company 2, but I certainly got shot a lot by it. Uh, you know, it looks like they got a nice plethora of guns coming back. And I think they made the right choices. I, I, one thing people were saying about was why bring back the Gol though, because I mean, for me, it's a bit of a nostalgic gun for sure. I actually used it plenty uh, when I was testing and got some, you know, good streaks with it. Um, it's a, it's an epic sounding gun as well, and you can really do some damage with it. But some people were sort of saying, do we really need another sniper rifle? You know, they were sort of saying like, how different can you make a sniper rifle from the other sniper rifles? Because, it, you know, it's either it's not going to be a one hit kill. And so, realistically, is it going to be very different from the you, other models you that we have? You always need there? more guns, Luton. I mean, you can say that about every every gun classification, and you're right. Like, we can we can only change up so many things in game, uh, and there there really aren't enough stats to really differentiate guns too well. Uh, but once you get into them enough, or maybe for just nostalgia's sake, you just have that option to use a sniper rifle that's essentially going to play out like any other sniper rifle, but it's the one that you really like, or it's the one that you remember. You can often have a feeling about a gun as well. You know, you can have like a literal sort of attachment to something. It doesn't often have to be, you know, stat-wise, the best, best gun, but sometimes you can perform better with something that you feel comfortable with, so that's as good yeah. a reason as anything else. Talking about that, what about the Dow 12? I know it's a firm favorite for you. <laughs> <laughs> so Dow 12 is like up there for one of my least favorite guns in Battlefield 3. Not that I don't like shotguns, I actually really did like shotguns. It was just, just I don't know, it fell into this area where everything just sucked about at the reload time. <laughs> uh, it just wasn't enjoying that weapon at all. So when I heard that it's coming back, I'm just like, oh great, can't wait to use this thing. I'm hoping that there's some nice upgrades I hear. You had some fun frag round moments with that. <laughs> it was hilarious, seriously. This gun with frag rounds is a monster. We were destroying people, and uh, we had a moment where we had about at least half our whole team were just running Dow 12 frags, and the other team didn't even have a chance. They couldn't see what was going on. They didn't know what was happening. They were just getting ragdolled all over the map, so it was really, <laughs> really good fun. So, yeah, Dow 12 frags. Get that into Battlefield 4, guys. It's, it's good fun, for sure. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing that in many, many games. But uh, yeah. I, I think they brought some good uh, guns back. Um, I know in Battlefield 4 came out, a lot of people were disappointed that many guns weren't in the list at the initial release. But again, like many things, we just guys calm down, okay, they're going to come back in, they're going to put the guns in with the DLCs, that's why they haven't included them at the launch. And for sure enough, we've seen a few of these appearing back in already. The F2000 though, I was surprised because that gun was very, very good. Uh, in Battlefield uh, 3 and it has nerfed it back a little. I tried to use it, I tried a few different setups and it, it wasn't terrible but you never sort of felt like yeah I'm in the power zone here you know. Um, so I think, I don't know whether people are going to be too excited about that gun, they'll probably try it and then sort of stick to what they know. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be the sentiment, uh, sentiment that once you get into breaking down the stats of the weapon you're going to be like oh I see this gun's geared towards hip firing really well or something yeah, so if yeah. you gear towards that and you play towards that style of playing then you're going to start to notice the benefits but 
Yeah, if they've changed up the style of a gun completely from what it used to be, then that sort of could throw you off. Um, the last thing that they added was Second Assault was Capture the Flag, which is not new by any means to the Battlefield series. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of CTF in BF3, um, just because of the addition of stuff like attack helicopters could kind of ruin that game mode. We did play a few rounds of it. I thought they were okay. What was uh, your opinion on CTF? We actually had some really good CTF rounds, uh, but we only played it on Firestorm, as I recall. Um, okay. I actually made maybe one other one, actually, I think, as well. But anyway, the point was um, it played out well, but I think the key issue is that CTF, very much like obliteration, can be night and day depending on what team you have. Uh, if you have a team that are just not aware of the game mode, they don't know the sort of general tactics of the game, it can be a shocking game mode. If you have two teams which are quite aware, it can be one of the best game modes. So it really just depends on how it plays out for you. Uh, the map-wise, they all played out well. Obviously, we've played them in Battlefield 3 as well, so it's 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 good to see it come back again. But um, it was fun for me, for sure. But um, it's a bit of a, a specialty. Uh, one thing I might say, though, is that the fact that we have obliteration in Battlefield 4 now, maybe people start to get more of a feel of that style of gameplay and so therefore maybe Capture Flag will play out better in Battlefield 4 than it did in Battlefield 3, but that remains to be seen, I think. So overall, we're getting a pretty action-packed expansion here with some good nostalgic maps and some fan-favorite weapons. I'm really looking forward to this launch. It's coming out on December 3rd for PC uh, and PlayStation 4. It's coming out on November 22nd, I believe, for the Xbox One. So I guess that date passed. So if you have the Xbox One, you get it on launch day and you got premium, you should have the Second Assault DLC. So we'd love to hear what you guys think about these new maps and new weapons. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap and Luton signing off.